Okay, well, good morning, vinyl community. Um, I haven't done one of these videos in a while. Um, got a couple of topics I want to talk about. Let me get started. Um, I want to give a shout out to a band. I see their albums around a fair amount. They're usually uh, pretty easy to find. They're usually very affordable. This band just did not get the love that I think they deserved. Um, so in the early 80s, you had those uh, really big bands from Athens, Georgia, R.E.M., and the B-52s. Love both of them, especially the B-52s. There was this third band formed in Marietta, Georgia, that for some reason, just it just didn't happen for them. And I want to give a shout out for, to the band Guadalcanal Diary, named after the... Uh, anyway, it's named after a book. Here is their debut album. Walk, walk, no, excuse me. This is the debut album, Walking in the Shadow of the Big Man, released in 1984. I do not have their second album. I do have what is kind of considered their, probably their most popular album, Two by Four, released in 1987. The last album, Flip flop, um, and their albums are fairly common. They're always cheap. In fact, I bought a second copy of Two by Four. It's part of their best album, and I found this really clean copy for five bucks with hype sticker and everything. Uh, I just think they're an absolutely tremendous band. Um, definitely uh, post punk. Uh, I would say quite a bit heavier than uh, R.E.M. Uh, just they just seem to be just just tougher um, I, I like like me some R.E.M. no disrespect to R.E.M. but I'd say any one of these three albums absolutely slaughters anything that R.E.M. ever put out I do not understand why this band just why it just didn't happen for this band anyway moving along <clears throat> I just want to grab a few current releases that are out there right now that I've picked up recently that you might want to snag before they go out of print because it's 2022 and that happens all the time. Um, we had a music on vinyl reissue of River Deep Mountain High by Ike and Tina Turner. This is um, Phil Spector at his Phil Spector ish. Um, just an absolute wall of sound masterpiece, but a, just a stupendous album. We have the new Half Speed Mastering Abbey Road Bloody 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 of Tommy. I know there's also one of these out there for the Who Sell Out. Believe the hype, it sounds absolutely amazing. I thought my OG copy of Tommy couldn't really be bettered. Uh, but it was bettered by that one. It truly lives up to the hype. Uh, snag it while it's still in the stores. Um, another new release, a triple live album by My Morning Jacket, recorded almost a year ago in November of 2021. Uh, pretty reasonably priced, too, for three LPs of vintage crazy ass live morning jacket just stupendous grab that if you can um going to um touch on the upcoming uh record store day uh black friday uh i didn't think there was a whole lot uh in coming out that i was that interested in there were a few things then i looked at the list this morning and i was like oh god there's more than i thought there was <laughs> so there's definitely some cool stuff coming out um Three that are definitely on my list. Um, we're getting two live albums of Ahmad Jamal. Called each one's called Emerald Nights, recorded in, in Seattle. I believe the first album's from '63 and the second one's from '65. I think I read apparently just crisp, crystal clear live recordings of Ahmad in the early 60s, uh, two different LPs. I'm definitely interested in that. Um, we are getting Pure Jerry, Hampton, Virginia, November 9th, 1991. Um, I really can't listen to any Jerry or Dead after 
like the 90s. Um, yeah, especially 92 and onwards. Jerry was just not not well, and uh, his playing really went downhill. His voice was shot. Um, this show I've heard before, and it's kind of the last hurrah. This is... Um, this is a really solid performance and some great playing from Jerry. I'm familiar with this show, so it's great to see it get a vinyl release. If there's a tornado and you can't <laughs> make it to the store on record store day or you can't afford it or whatever, uh, I was listening to this beast that apparently was also released in 91 recently, reissued on vinyl. You got this, Jerry Garcia Band. Um, this came out pretty recently. It's from the same period. This is a fantastic vinyl reissue. Um, yeah, sounds just amazing. Um, some killer renditions of Dear Prudence, uh, the usuals like Simple Twist of Fate, uh, Brothers and Sisters, I Shall Be Released. Um, just some great, great stuff on this. Um, oh, and of course, Don't Let Go, always a high point of... Uh, Jerry shows. Oh, and speaking of Don't Let Go, if you didn't know, Jerry Lee Lewis finally passed a couple of weeks ago. So, rest in peace to the killer. Um, yeah, he was a giant. Uh, rest in peace, Jerry Lee Lewis. Another Vinyl Store Day release coming out. Um, we have also Grateful Dead related. Um, we will be seeing another Europe 72 vinyl release. April 7th, 72, the opening night of the tour, that's the Wembley Arena. A while back, we got treated to the second night at Wembley. This is the one with the Dark Star. So being Europe 72, the first night, you get the other one. Um, but yeah, um, I've pretty much <laughs> snagged every Europe 72 vinyl release that's come out because it's Europe 72 and it's amazing stuff. Um, so I want to keep this video shorter. Some of my other videos have tended to be a little long. Um, I will just briefly, uh, mention some records I've been listening to recently. Um, heavy rotational ones that I think stand out maybe, or just, uh, I couldn't find... The one album that I really kind of wanted to make is like my number one. Um, but here are three albums that I think are really worth paying attention to. Uh, these are like the two runner-ups. We have Dizzy Gillespie, New Wave. This is, I believe, from the early 60s. Uh, we got Layla Schifrin on keyboards. Uh, I just love this album. I used to have it on CD and I bought it again on vinyl because it's great. We got some early Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds kicking against the pricks. I love this album and I especially love their cover of All Tomorrow's Parties by the Velvet Underground. But the winner is, uh, I believe this was from 1976. Stanley Clark, School Days. Uh, I like me 70s jazz. I know some people kind of consider the 70s as the period when jazz lost its way and there are bell bottoms and afros and all that stuff. I I, I like 70s jazz and um, I have to say this may be the best Stanley Clark album. But uh, yeah, there's a slew of them. There's about three or four Stanley albums from the late 70s. They're all just stupendous. Um, I think this is kind of considered to be the best one of the lot. But uh, these are definitely, you want to talk about dollar bin records, and <laughs> pretty much anything by Stanley Clark, man, you can find these in the dollar bin. No, no question about it. Um, you will definitely find some Stanley Clark in the dollar bins. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why, because I think he's great. So, last thing I want to touch on, a um, little bit of sad news. We lost Mimi Parker of the band Low. There's an immemorial written up in the New York Times. New York Times, November 11th, has an immemorial for Mimi Parker, a uh, vocalist for the band Low, who 
they were sort of, uh, they're definitely kind of an indie band, um, kind of, they have kind of a melancholy sound, but I don't think that really quite does them justice. Um, I know they're from Minnesota, I believe, kind of the land of um, Big Star and that whole indie scene. Uh, they're my favorite Minneapolis band, personally, is the Jayhawks. Um, but yeah, uh, Mimi Parker has passed. Um, according to the New York Times, they released 13 albums. I want to draw a little bit of attention to uh, their last three albums that I have handy. Um, in, let me make sure I get my facts straight here. In 2018, they released an album called Double Negative, where they kind of went strongly in kind of an electronic direction. People were like, minds blown. They were um, like, wow, they, they really kind of embraced a lot of electronic textures and sounds like that. Um, last night, I listened to their 2016 album, Ones and Sixes. I think the electronic sound actually begins on this album. It's maybe a little muted on this album, but it's definitely there. They seem to be kind of heading in a new direction. Just an unbelievable album. This is Ones and Sixes. Sorry, that was released in 2015. Then in 20. 18, double negative, um, definitely strongly in an electronic direction. And then last year we had what unfortunately is probably going to be the final album from Low, Hey What, also on the Sub Pop label. They signed to Sub Pop in 2004. 2004, they signed to Sub Pop with the Great Destroyer album, another great album. Uh, which I have, but I don't have my copy handy. Um, so yeah, 13 albums. I like everything I've heard by them, and this makes me just want to check out their discography even more. Uh, there's definitely some earlier albums I've never heard. Um, so yeah, some sad news there. Um, rest in peace, Mimi Parker. Uh, last thing, I'm going to give a plug. I'll put this in the YouTube description. Uh, recently found a great channel called Taste Like Music. Um, this is three guys, I believe they're from the Pittsburgh area. They tend to be, they're, they're kind of younger music listeners, so you get a little bit of perspective from a younger generation. I said they're like in their late 20s. But uh, tons of uh, album rankings, um, disc discographies, uh, just three opinionated guys talking about music. Uh, I just... It's a great channel. They're funny. They're entertaining to listen to. Um, and uh, I don't always agree with their opinions, but they can kind of back it up and give reasons why maybe they think some albums are maybe overrated and others are maybe underrated and just a great discussion. Um, check out the channel Taste Like Music. Uh, I've just been watching tons of their videos over the last couple of weeks. They're, they're entertaining, they're informative, and uh, like I said, um, uh, I've kind of listened to some of their uh, videos and then kind of re-listened to albums to see if uh, I could maybe hear some of what they're talking about. Like, for instance, they maybe focus on whether or not production ruins <laughs> an album, which is a fair criticism. You can have an album that maybe has great songwriting and everything, but the production just ruins it. Um, so yeah, um, I've kind of watched some of their videos and it's kind of made me re-listen to some albums I hadn't listened to in a while um, based on what they had to say, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I'll put that in the description. Uh, hope to do these videos maybe a little more than I've been doing. I'm trying to keep them kind of short. So anyway, happy November, everyone. Happy Turkey Day and all that. See you around.